In this video, we're going to take a look at the syntax of propositional logic. So we're going to learn how to draw little tree structures for each of our well-formed formulas and to determine whether or not a formula is well-formed. So by the end of the video, you should be able to answer this question. But let's get into this. In our language of propositional logic, which I will call PL in all the videos, in some textbooks you might see this as statement logic or SL, or simply truth functional logic as TFL. We have different things in our language that we allow. So we allow propositions and we give these capital letters like P, Q, R, S, T, and so on. But we can also use, say, P prime or P double prime or P triple prime by using these little uh, quotation marks or apostrophes after each one. Or we can also give them subscripts like P1, P2, P3, and so on. So if, for instance, we have more than 26 propositions, you know, we don't run out of letters to use. We have connectives, so these are the things that connect our propositions with others or modify their values or meanings. So in the last video we learned about the negation, the conjunction, the disjunction, the conditional, and the biconditional. Of course, if you're using a different system, you might use, say, the tilde for not, you might use the dot or ampersand for and, you might use the plus for or, you might use this material implication symbol for the conditional, and you might use the three bars for the biconditional. So depending on what system you use, you'll have different symbols for the connectives. Finally, we have punctuation. So we're allowed to have a left parentheses, a right parentheses, and then the square brackets, we're allowed to use those too. So we say that a formula is well-formed. It's a well-formed formula, and we abbreviate this as WFF. You can pronounce this as woof, so it's a fun thing to say, and it's a well-formed formula if and only if it is built from the elements above according to specific rules. So if we have something that's not in this language, then it's not a well-formed formula. If it violates the rules, then it's not a well-formed formula. So what are those rules? Well, here's the rules we have. One, any proposition is a well-formed formula. So if we have something like P, or if we have something like Q, or something like R, or S, or say P prime, these are all well-formed formulas. If we have some formula alpha, and that's well-formed, then not alpha is well-formed. So we can draw this. We can say, okay, suppose we have some well-formed formula alpha, and we have a negation. We can combine those two together to give us not alpha. This would be the same thing as saying, imagine we have something like P or Q, and we want to attach a negation to it, we can combine those two to get not and then P or Q in brackets. Okay, so that's the only rule we have for unary operators. Now let's take a look at our binary operators. Well, if alpha and beta are woofs, then alpha and beta is a woof. So imagine we have uh, alpha and we have beta. We can combine these two with the and operator to get alpha and beta, and we should put some parentheses around them so we know which two are linked. Uh, if we have alpha and beta are whoops, we can do the same thing with the or sign. So alpha or beta, these can combine together to make alpha or beta in brackets. And this will be the same with the conditional and the biconditional. So I wanna show you another example here where it's not just alpha and beta, because alpha and beta can stand for anything that's well-formed. So suppose we have, say, P and Q on the left, and we have R or Q on the right, and we can combine these two with, say, the arrow, and that will give us P and Q, arrow, R or Q, and then we should put these in brackets. So essentially here, our alpha is P and Q, our beta is R or Q, and then we're joining them together with the arrow. So this still has the form alpha, arrow, beta. So it's well formed. Then our final rule just closes it up and it says nothing else is a woof. So for instance, we cannot just have, as an example, we cannot say alpha, arrow, beta, and I don't know, gamma. And we can't make something that combines all five of these at once. We would have to do these in steps. So uh, that would not be okay. So. I'm going to take a look at two different formulas, and we're going to break them down into how they were composed using our rules here. So I'm going to center this in the middle because I want to build a tree structure. 
So the first thing is identifying what the main connective is. So usually what I do is I take a look at the brackets. So I see a bracket start here, I see it goes to the end, this is closing, I see a bracket here and a bracket over here. So I know there's two things here. There is an alpha, there is a beta, and these are connected by some connective, in this case it's or. So I can break this down into three different components that we can further break down. It's connected by an or, and we have two well-formed formulas here. We have D, arrow, E, and F. That's one side, and on the right side we have F, if and only if D. Now I'm gonna break the right side down first because I see two things, F and D, and I see it being conjoined by the if and only if. So we can break this down into F, if and only if, D. So our right side is done, and on the left I see two things. I see D on its own, I see E and F as a pair, so this is like alpha and beta, and I see these joined by a connective. So I can split this up further into D, the conditional, and then E and F. Now with E and F, I see an alpha, I see a beta, I see an and conjoining these two, so we can break this down into E and F. So this is just a nice way of showing the structure. And you can think of this as top down, or you can think of this as bottom up. So for example, first E and F are joined together by AND to make E and F. Uh, then we take D, we take the arrow, we take E and F together, and we join them to get D, arrow, E and F. That's one side. On the right side, we have F and D. We take the biconditional, we join them together to get F, if and only if D. Now we take these two well-formed formulas, and we join them together with the OR here to get our top result d arrow e and f, or f if and only if d. There's one example. Let's take a look at another example. This one's a little bit more complicated. But let's see what we can do. I'm going to center this. So the first thing I do is I take a look at our brackets. I see an open bracket here, and I'm going to see where it closes. So it closes right here. So this should be one well-formed formula alpha. I see an arrow, so here's our operator. And I see another set of brackets here, s and not not t, we'll call this beta. So we can break this down into three different components with an arrow in the middle. On the left we have not p or q and not p or r. Okay, this is going to break down quite a bit. And on the right side we have s and not not t. Okay, let's just do the right side first because it's, it's shorter. So s and not not t. I see a well-formed formula S, I see a well-formed formula not not T, it's connected by AND, so we're going to split this up into S and not not T. With not not T here, I see there's a negation, and that is attached to this other well-formed formula not T. So I can break this up into a negation and not T. And then with not T, I can break this up once more into a negation and T. So if we go in reverse, we can see how this was made. We start with T. We attach a negation to it, we get not t. We take not t, we add a negation to it, we get not not t. Uh, then we take not not t along with s, we use the conjunction, and that gives us s and not not t. Okay, then on the left side we have not p or q and not p or r. So we have one well, for, well uh, one woof here, this is not p, so that could be our alpha. We have Q and not P or R, that could be our beta, it's being conjoined by the OR. So we can split this up into not P or Q and not P or R. Okay, not P, this is built from the negation and P. And then with Q and not P or R, well we have Q here, we have not P or R as our second woof. So this is built from Q, it's built from AND, and it's built from not P or R. Okay, at this point, we have a negation being attached to a well-formed formula. So we can split this up into not, and then P or R. And finally, we're left with P or R, which we know comes from P, comes from OR, and comes from R. So I'm at the very bottom of my page here. This was quite a big tree, but I can fit that in right there. So. That is the syntactic construction of this well-formed formula. And again, we can do this in reverse too. So we have P, we have R, we join them together with OR to get P or R. We then took P or R, we added a negation to it to get not P or R. We then took that well-formed formula, conjoined it with Q in the conjunction to get Q and not P or R. 
On the left side, we had p, so we attached a negation to p to get not p. We took these two well-formed formulas, brought them together with or, to get this big thing, not p or q and not p or, or r. And then we took our two well-formed formulas, used a conditional to join them together to get the big boy at the top. So as a final exercise for you, I want to ask which one of these are well-formed formulas. So at this point, we know how the rules work. We know what we need with the negation, conjunction, disjunction, conditional, and biconditional. So we should be able to recognize whether something is well-formed or not. So the worst, the, the first one, for instance, not P, Q, arrow T. Well, this is not a woof because we have a negation for P here, but then we have this other proposition Q. So we need something here to join them together, like not P and Q, or not P or Q. Or maybe the not attaches to P and Q, or not P or Q. So this is not well formed. What about the next one? Well, not S is good, because we take S and we attach the negation to it. Uh, not not T is good, because we take T in the negation, and then we can add another negation to that. Uh, these are in brackets, so we have two things joined by OR, so that's fine. And then we're adding Q. So it's basically this entire thing and, and then this little Q here. So yes, this is a well-formed formula. And we could draw a tree for this if we wanted to. What about this last one? P if and only if R, then S. Okay, well according to the rules, this is not a well-formed formula. And it's not a well-formed formula because we don't know if it's P if and only if R, then S or if it's p, if and only if, r, then s. In this case, it is ambiguous. So because it's ambiguous, it is not well-formed. Because when we take two things together and we can join them by an operator, like say the conjunction or disjunction, we should have brackets around them. Now, the only time we omit brackets is when we have an entire formula. So it should be p arrow r with brackets around them, but if that's the entire thing, like that's our final step, then we don't have to include those because we know that's the endpoint. Uh, but in this case here, where we don't have these brackets, uh, we don't know how they're supposed to be put together. There are some conventions that some textbooks take according to strength to know if you have something like this, which one attaches to which one first. Uh, but in our system, we don't have rules like that yet. So we should have everything in brackets. So yes, because it is ambiguous, it is not well formed in this case. So at this point, you should be able to answer these questions, which ones are well formed, and if they are well formed, draw a tree structure to them. So in the next video, we will go over the solutions. So stay tuned to that.